Health data is a valuable resource as statisticians collaborate to help improve the health of everyone. But the risk of breaching the privacy of individuals in using it is essential to consider. To look at an innovative way to preserve privacy but maximize the value of this data, we're joined by Brown's Rebecca Hubbard. It's so nice to meet you, Rebecca. Thanks for coming. Really on. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. It's one of those things as statisticians, you want to protect the privacy, but you also are trying to do effective research. Talk about some of the risks that, and how you get around that. So every time we're doing analysis with real health data from real people, we need to make sure that there are really careful privacy controls. So one of the things I like to think about is the minimum necessary rule. So whenever I'm doing research with real patient data, I try to make sure that whatever I'm using includes the most minimal amount of information that's personally identifiable possible. However, in addition to wanting to use the data and trying to learn from it as much as we can, there's a mandate to share data with other individuals. So if we're taking, for instance, research funding from the NIH, they expect that we're going to make that data available so that the public can benefit from it broadly. So if I'm doing research with personally identifiable information from the EHR, and I want to share that with other people so that they can also make use of this resource, I can't just take the data sets that I've collected from their electronic health records and just put them up on a website or you know, send them in a data file to other researchers. So one of the ideas that's out there to try to facilitate data sharing for these protected confidential data is this idea of what if we could identify the underlying generative model that gives rise to the data, and then rather than sharing the original source data, we could generate new synthetic data, which preserve the relationships that we've observed in the real data, but don't belong to any real individual. So then we can share that information, other researchers can learn from it, we can continue to look for relationships in the data, but we're not potentially releasing private identifiable information. We were talking off camera, you know, a lot of challenges, that fine line you walk between making sure you, you've ensured that the, the data is removed from the individual, but it still has value and there's accuracy there. Talk about that, that challenge and how you're navigating that. Yeah, so that's the real tension because in order for these synthetic generated data to be useful, they have to preserve all of the information that was there in the individual um, original source data. But if we really preserved the totality of that information, we would just be replicating the information from those original individuals. So it's a tension between wanting to generate data that still preserve the relationships that we're interested in, but on the other hand, disguise the identifiable information about specific individuals. Um, I don't think that there's a good solution to that problem yet, and it really depends on the specific use case of what we're planning to do with the data, where you want to land on that spectrum between identifiability of private information and preserving all of those relationships that exist in the information um, that, we, that we're getting these relationships from. So as statisticians, we use synthetic data for things all the time for years, and we don't usually call them synthetic. Um, we'll call it imputed data or multiply imputed data, um, but what we mean is fake. You know, we've just generated it from some kind of underlying model that we've constructed. Looking towards the future, this type of generative model is what underlies all of the AI technologies that people are so excited about right now. And there definitely will be more opportunities. There will be more generative models which can better replicate these relationships all the time. However, I think it's very likely that there are theoretical limitations to how faithfully we can reproduce the data while still protecting privacy. So ultimately, I think we probably can come up with the best model in the world um, that uses some super powerful machine learning or AI technology, totally recreates the original source data, but also does not protect privacy. So, you know, I think ultimately there's sort of a ceiling that we're going to hit in terms of using these data for the purposes of public release and privacy preservation. That is something that's going to be ongoing. We're gonna to continue to learn how to navigate. Such an important topic and important work you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you.